Music history story time. Now we've all heard the stories of Led Zeppelin chucking Zenus out a hotel window and Ozzy snorting lines of fire ants. But even with all the bling and the trouble and the antics and the drug addiction of rock stars and rappers and pop stars, you can usually find an even more ridiculous story that flies under the radar in the genre of country music. Well, you know, country music before Nashville put on bedazzled skinny jeans and made every song something along the lines of hey girl, beer, pickup truck, bonfire, moonshine, rapey vibes. But anyway, one of my favorite ridiculous country stories is how Chris Christopherson became Chris Christopherson. Now, if you don't know who Chris Christopherson is, you need better taste. And as badass as he is as a vampire-killing sensei, he is way more than that. He is one of the most prolific songwriters of all time. When you think me and Bobby McGee, you probably think Janis Joplin, but you should be thinking Chris Christopherson. Chris is a Texas native from a military family who became an Oxford-educated Rhodes Scholar before joining the U.S. Army in the early 1960s under pressure from his family. While in the Army, he became a captain, completed a ranger school, and became a helicopter pilot. Once his tour in Germany was complete, he decided to leave the Army rather than accept a position of teaching at West Point and pursue a music career in Tennessee. However, his family disowned him as a result, and he spent a few years as a starving artist struggling in Nashville. During this time, he got a job sweeping floors at Columbia Records in Nashville and a part-time job flying helicopters to oil platforms for a company out of Louisiana. So he was a janitor, moonlighting as a helicopter pilot. While working at Columbia, he had actually met Johnny Cash, though Johnny Cash didn't really know who he was, but he had also met June Carter Cash and befriended her. And Chris kept giving June demo tapes to give to Johnny, hoping that he would catch his big break. However, Johnny would keep throwing the demo tapes into the lake behind his house. And this went on for some time as uh, Chris continued to struggle as Johnny continued to quite literally sink his music career. Still struggling to make ends meet, Chris would end up joining the Tennessee National Guard. And being a helicopter pilot, the National Guard naturally stuck him right back in a helicopter. And it was at this time that Chris Christopherson decided that he would no longer be ignored by the man in black. So what's an army helicopter pilot to do when he knows that he needs to get the intention and make a lasting impression on a music god and living legend who barely knows he exists? Well, first, you write one of the greatest songs of all time, obviously, and then you deliver it to the man himself by stealing a helicopter from the U.S. Army and landing it in the backyard of one of the most famous men in the entire world. And then just hope he doesn't shoot you while you walk up to his back door and hand him a tape of Sunday morning coming down. And that is literally what Christofferson did. He went and got into his Huey to go fly a training mission that somehow miraculously could get off the ground with the weight of his gigantic balls in the cockpit. And then in the middle of this training flight, diverted course, landed the chopper damn near on Johnny Cash's roof, right in his backyard, walked up, handed him a recording of what is arguably one of the greatest songs ever written, got back in his helicopter, and flew away over the lake that was full of all of the other recordings of his that Johnny didn't want to listen to and threw out the window. <laughs> now, as the details of the meeting, Chris and Johnny tell two different stories. Cash's grandiose rendition of the story is that Christofferson landed in the backyard, stumbled out of the Huey with a beer in one hand and the cassette in the other, walked up to him, handed the cassette, walked back to the helicopter almost upright, and flew away. Chris says that's not true. It takes two hands to fly a helicopter, so there's no way he could have been carrying a beer, and he's not even sure Johnny was home for this whole experience. He also said it was an extreme violation of Cash's privacy and would not recommend or condone anybody doing that. Whatever the truth of the story may be, it achieved what Christofferson was looking to do and left quite the impression on Johnny Cash. So much so that Cash ended up singing the song that following Thursday on his national television show. Chris and Cash would become fast friends friends, and Chris would go on to become a legend of outlaw country and a world-renowned singer and songwriter in his own right, even going on to join Waylon and Willie and the Boys as a member of the iconic Highwaymen. And in addition to be a talented singer and songwriter, he's also a gifted actor who used this opportunity to springboard onto the silver screen and has had a long and successful acting career starting in the 1970s to as recently as 2015. So just remember the next time you're making fun of country music, there's a good chance one of the legends of country has done something more badass than you could ever imagine. And if you can't appreciate the songs, you should at least appreciate the stories.